What is up? Uh, my name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at No More Parties. Um, go ahead and follow me over there. Follow me on TikTok at No More Parties. Subscribe to this channel. Um, I do running back evaluations for like Dynasty, Devi League type stuff. Um, generally projecting running backs from college to the NFL using a lot of data. And I'd like to start being able to incorporate film study into my process. And so this is part of my journey of kind of trying to learn how to watch film, um, how to study players and gain insights from that. Um, we're going to watch a game here. Uh, Zach Charbonnet versus LSU from last season. We got the all 22 angle. Um, shout out to dynasty nerds for having this on their website. Um, Zach Charbonnet is a guy who, given like the data that I've looked at, I haven't been a huge fan. I know that he was like a really popular Devi guy a couple of years ago when he was first starting out at Michigan. I'm kind of a big time recruit. Um, a lot of people were high on him. I really wasn't. Um, he just didn't show out in a lot of the metrics that I like to look at. Um, but he's been better since transferring to LSU. I know a lot of film people like him, you know, outside the numbers, liked him at Michigan, like continue to like him at LSU. So I'm, you know, excited to see what he looks like on film. Like I, I really don't know that much about him other than what the numbers tell me. Um, I'm kind of expecting like a, a good pure runner here, but um, watched Blake Corum in a couple videos previously. So this will be a nice change of pace. Um, get to see what uh, Zach Charbonnet is all about. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, he was circled on that outside. I don't think that was actually him. Okay, we're going to back this up so I can uh, kind of diagnose what I'm looking at here. Um, I'm still kind of trying to find a format, you know, what kind of format works for these videos that I'm doing. Um, kind of my priority is just me figuring out how to watch film, like gaining some insights on these players, getting reps, um, doing that. But I also want this to be, you know, digestible content in some fashion. Um, last couple of videos I watched these games beforehand for the last Blake Corum video, I took notes on what sorts of like run types given the blocking schemes and things like that, that I was seeing before actually filming. I haven't done that for this game. So this is the first time I've watched this game. So I'm going to try to diagnose what sorts of blocking I'm seeing here. And immediately I see there's nobody pulling. We've got a play side tight end. That's Greg Dulcich. Uh, we got a wide receiver there. And immediately I see these interior double teams, which tells me this might be, this is probably duo, play side tight end, um, interior double teams, and in duo, I think we're reading this Mike linebacker, yeah, the running back is reading the play side linebacker, okay, so Charbonnet's pressing, this linebacker I think my pencil's going to work this time. This linebacker is diving here. This guy's got outside leverage. There's a lineman, 70 or whatever this guy is, is in the way. But this looks like it's it's the lane. We'll see what Charbonnet does here. Okay, he bounces this out. Do I like that? What is he seeing out here? He sees... I mean, this guy's got outside leverage. I can't tell from here if zero's... Yeah, okay, zero's working on a double there. Okay, so I guess Charbonnet just sees this, sees this double, and the only other guy he's got to beat by getting outside is this... I think this is a defensive back, maybe a safety... 
And he cuts inside and ends up, you know, beating that guy. Do we think he could have flattened out and gotten outside? Maybe not. That's interesting that this, you know, you think one option here against this guy, this 25, <clears throat> one option would be take this, this right foot that he's planting, cut off of it, and try to make this guy miss. But it really looks like he's planting... He's just putting his shoulders down trying to run through this guy. He's This is the end of the play. He's just trying to make the most out of this through, you know, finishing physically. He's not trying to make this guy miss. He kind of does because that guy, that guy totally whiffs. But then there's other guys to kind of clean up the trash there. Okay, what are we looking at here? We have a pulling guard. We got all sorts of movement here. Okay, we got a play side tight end. This looks like, is that Dulcich or is that a receiver? That's a receiver. This is such a weird play. Okay, we got a play side tight end. This guard's going to pull. I think he just kind of gets around there. We got so much movement to that side. So much, so many blockers here. Is this, I don't know what this is, power? My impression of power, my understanding of power, is that our polar is hitting the edge. Is this tackle also considered a polar? I don't know. But this almost looks like an outside zone track where Charbonnet is just really flat this entire way and he's reading either bounce or cut up. And what are his opportunities here? This looks like a lane developing to me here, especially if this guy can come around and block 20 three or whatever that guy is. That looks like an opportunity to cut. Charbonnet turns it out wider than that. Which is interesting. Does he need to? He's just committed to going wide on this play. But this guy, number one or whatever he is, gets some push on this tight end. I'd like to see that other angle because it did look like Charbonnet gained like six yards here. From that end zone angle, it looked like he didn't get much of anything. This still looks like to me from this angle that this would be the alley with two coming across, taking out 23. That looks like the alley to me. Charbonnet flattens it out. And he's just able to get what he gets because he's strong. That 
It's impressive to be able to run through. Eleven just is really high on that tackle attempt, and this is really... That's two arms, I think, but that's an arm tackle. He's not making contact with Charbonnet's bot. You know, that's not body-to-body -body contact there with Charbonnet and Eleven. That's... Yeah, he's reaching with his arms there. Charbonnet's strong enough to run out of it. And he just takes five for a ride as he falls forward. That's impressive strength. I'm not sure if I agree with his read on the play. Yeah, I still think cutting up through here, the end result of the play is probably similar given that Charbonnet was strong enough to drag that out when there was nothing going on outside. But I don't think he made the right read here. He's, that's just a nice, he does a good job working through this garbage once he's committed to the outside. He's stepping over one guy, shaking off an arm tackle, carrying another guy, two more guys jump on, and he's still able to fall forward. That's impressive just from, from a physical standpoint. He's blocking here, I don't really care about that. Play fake. There's Dulcich running wild. All right, this is a counter run. Nicely blocked. That's a nice cut. Okay. Holy shit. Okay. Goddamn. This. Yeah, okay, this looks like a counter run to me. Let me just make sure I'm not not crazy. Okay. Play side O-line doubles backside to create a seal. That's what the guard and tackle are doing. We got this double right here, doubling on 94. Two backside pullers. First puller kicks out the edge. Second puller is going to take out a linebacker. And the edges are already taken care of, so it's clearing out a DB and then finding another DB. This is just a beautifully blocked play. The timing of it is really nice as well with these counter steps. Charbonnet is able to let these blocks develop. Massive hole. And he's pretty even with his receiver here as, you know, how far they are downfield, Charbonnet may be a step behind him. But this is an impressive lateral cut to be able to see this cutback lane that he ends up making. Because in, in order to avoid this guy, you think, okay, he could just go this way as fast as he can. These guys probably meet him somewhere, but that's a 15-yard gain. You know, maybe he draws him in and then makes a cut this direction. You know, maybe not that hard, but cuts this direction. And I think what he ends up doing is cutting back like that. That's an impressive lateral cut. And he, the fact that he's able to make that and flatten out so quickly, he, di he didn't even have to break down. 
He's still upright. He's a pretty upright runner. Boom. In the matter of one gather step, one gather step, one more step to explode off of, and he's he's made that cut and changed his trajectory. And from there, right here on the field, he ends up like over here where he's breaking those tackles. And where this is, a, this is a head on collision here that he's heading for with number four, maybe right here. It turns into a diving tackle attempt. This is, that's impressive. He's able to step out of it. I don't know if he's just stumbling here for he's putting his head down. I think he's just putting his head down. That guy goes low. Man, he just keeps his knees moving, gets his arms out. He's just moving his entire body, keeping his whole body moving in order to get out of these tackles, and they still don't get him down. I want to see that from that other angle again. This is a really, really nice run. Not much going on for him at the first level here. They spring him pretty easily, but this this work on the second level from Charbonnet is really impressive. Boom. He's out of there. Look at me. He's almost parallel to the ground with his back. Look how high he kicks up that leg. Oh, let me get that. Look at that. His leg is above his head. His foot is above his leg. The other one goes up high too. There's no way with him moving his legs that violently, dipping his back, dipping his helmet, kicking up his legs behind him. One has no chance at making this tackle if that's how Charbonnet is going to kick. And the balance to be able to then absorb that next hit. Because he, he transfers right from this sort of horizontal hurdle into making contact with this other guy and is immediately balanced again. Fights him off, fights off 11. That's a nice, <laughs> that's a really nice run. Oh shit. Okay, just play fake here. Nothing really going on for Charbonnet. More Dulcich. See how he catches his ball. Hard to tell from that angle if he's just kind of cushioning that with his body. He's got his hands out. It did take him a little bit to secure it. You, you, you see it's almost still moving around there. Yeah, it shifts a little bit in his hand, but nobody near him. It's pretty good speed, it looks like to me, in the open field. I got this on 50 or 0.5x. But he takes care of that angle with 18 or another, I don't know, 20 yards of yak. Yeah, he kind of cradles that into his chest or his, his bicep at least. What the fuck is this? Okay. And what is this? This is Chip Kelly, isn't it? 
This is very different from the uh, stuff they're running at Michigan. Okay, so we got... These linemen are pretty spread out. We got... Are these guys pulling? Are these guys just taking a wide... Yeah, this looks like a play side... It looks like a pull from the play side tackle. And is that the center? Yeah, the center, I think, is this guy. That's two polars working to the play side. Pin and pull? Is this pin and pull? I have not, I don't think I've encountered pin and pull. This looks like pin and pull, okay. Playside guard. Let me see if I just want to make sure I'm diagnosing this correctly. Playside guard pins down on interior defensive lineman to the backside. Sure, I guess. That would be 62. Playside tackle. No, this can't be pin and pull. Because that would be our backside tackle coming through. And this playside tackle would be just kicking out this edge. Which. I mean, our tight end has the edge. He's not really kicking him out. I don't know what this is. Maybe this is just some sort of counter run. Either way, it's designed to get out on this edge here, apparently. It's pretty well blocked as well. He scores. Yeah, that's an easy touchdown. Okay. 92, not a problem. Just run by him. Charbonnet looks like he wants to cut this back. But right now, there's no lanes. This would be a hard cut back. There's no reason to bail. 99's got inside leverage. 23's also kind of closing this off, so that's not an option. 8 has inside leverage here, so that's not an option. That's not an option. This is not an option. Does he go here? Or does he kick it even wider? Yeah. So that's, I mean, not a... I don't think that's a difficult run for him here, but he does a good job of, you know, kind of carrying out on this wide track as long as he needs to. His little hop step here, you can tell... He, he's going to cut it up if something's there, but he, he doesn't see anything and is willing to just stay wide. Another counter run. Okay. I like the timing of these counter runs much more than the way Michigan's running it. It's tough to see what's going on back here. It's tough to tell. Because I think he, you know, I think you'd want to get out here a little bit, and he ends up, you know, pushing it inside. But I think he feels penetration just in this sort of general area. And so doesn't want to, you know, have to round off to get it to the outside. So he ends up just diving in. This angle is not great for kind of sensing that uh, penetration. Here, we'll get a better look at it. Yeah. I mean, you, you could just see where his eyes are as well. He's reading this direction. And you, you, could, you could see the way his, his hips are faced right now going that way, his chest, his toes, he's still looking to get outside here. But he's he's taken that little step. I think he knows already that it might not happen. Yeah. He's already preparing. He's that step 
little hops up. He's flattening out. He already senses that not happening. And so now we see him facing more to the inside. So he's looking here. At this point, there's too much penetration back here for him to round this off. So now, you know, kind of the design of the play is over. And it's just Charbonnet has got a guy in the hole. What's he going to do with him? And he's just not quite able to... to make him miss. Good tackle, getting him by the ankles there. Could he have pressed more to the outside here to get 23 going and then cut him back? Because 23 is following him to the outside. 23, Charbonnet's kind of already turned here, but with Charbonnet on this track, 23 is following. Is there an opportunity for Charbonnet to just continue to press for a few more steps and then cut it back? Does he turn this, turn this inside too early? I think he might. I think he might turn this inside too early. This is just wide open. What kind of a down and distance situation are we looking at here? Okay, they're at... Okay, this is something in 20. We got the first down marker here at the 35-yard line. They're at like the 15. So this is an obvious passing situation where they're just going to run it and pick up something cheap. Massive hole. Tons of green. Get to see him in the open field. <laughs> that hole's huge. Cuts it out. I think that's the right read. That was nice to press that. Because, you know, if he just sees this and immediately kind of takes a track out here, maybe one, maybe one gets him. But he's got to suck... Suck one in into this block. Suck 28 into the traffic as well. So he takes a couple upfield steps. And now 28's got to go around to get him. One's going to have to, you know, free himself from this block to get him. He's able to shed one. It's a nice little open field cut. We got him on a screen. Just diagnosed well. I don't know enough to know if Charbonnet could have done anything differently there, but the defense was just all over it. Okay, immediately I'm thinking, could he have cut this towards the backside? I mean, this looks like a massive hole to me. Although when we see that other angle, this might be a massive hole as well. But I mean, he ends up making contact with somebody right off the bat. All right, this looks like Looks like it could be duo with these two double teams. If this is the play side, it's kind of hard to tell what the play side is supposed to be, but that's uh, I think that's Dulcich. We got a play side tight end. And in duo, if that's the first read, if we're going to call this duo, he's reading 18.
So if he's reading 18... I mean, really, he could go either direction here. These are both just pretty big holes. He has to cut, you know, kind of swing his hips outside of zero there. Good job running through that. And just He's, he's a powerful guy. He's taking multiple people to drag him down on almost every play here. Would this outside track have been better? I don't even think he's thinking about it. I think he's looking at 18. And given that this is just right in front of him and this is a pretty big hole, I think that's just where he ends up going. And, you know, to be fair, he does press to the outside here enough that I think 18 can't just fill this hole immediately. You know, if he just takes this and immediately just runs right through this hole, there's, there's no... No doubt for 18, no hesitation. He can just meet him. He can just come here and meet him. But Charbonnet stays on a track kind of towards this, I think this is the center, and then makes a cut. And now 18 is not in a position to make this tackle anymore. So given, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm coming around on this run, I guess. I think he could have made that work either way, but... He sucked him in nicely by by pressing close to the line there. We get him lead blocking. Nice. It's another counter run. A little cut back inside. Does he ever go down on first contact or with just one guy? Yeah, okay. It, this isn't counter. I don't think. Because this two is not a puller. Two, maybe he's a puller. I don't, I don't know what the what the distinctions are, but two is not a lineman. Two is a receiver coming across. This might be, it's not inside, it's not split zone. I don't know. We got interior double interior double team, so it's, it's not counter. Definitely not counter. It's not power. I don't think. And the cat wants in. Okay. My best guess here is that this is duo. I think this is duo. Is it? I don't. I, I don't know what this is. But it looks like he initially wants to go outside here. You can see his eyes. He's reading here. He wants to get outside. And is there just not much there? Well, two whiffs on this block. He gets outside of his guy, but I don't know that he has enough contact with 23 that 23 is not going to be able to cut this off if Charbonnet goes outside. This guy's got, you know, a little bit of outside leverage. He's pretty stood up, but his helmet's on that outside. This cutback looks like the right read. 
and he just he just sifts through the trash and ends up getting something out of this. Yeah, I think he cuts this back in because he sees 23 here. Two overran him. Not able to make that block. So even though this is kind of clogged up, that's the move. He explodes through it. He's able to break a tackle. And then it takes four of them. This is uh is this a counter run. Yeah, this is another counter run. Penetration in the backfield almost immediately again. I mean, good job getting back to the line of scrimmage. Three kind of blows this up. Three's immediately in the backfield. We get a chip on him. 21's in the backfield. Yeah, three forces him to widen out immediately. Yeah, we already we already got to hop and change our track. Because three's here. So we're going to flatten out. He's going to meet 21 and have to cut it back inside. And then who was that? 23's there. I mean, the fact that he got back to the line of scrimmage there is a win, I think. Whew. A little cutback. Is this split zone? I don't know. I mean, that backside edge is not unblocked. I don't think this is split zone. Wind back? I I don't know what this is. It looks it looks like this left side is the play side. I don't know. All the linemen are going this way. But just with the track he seems to be taking and with this guy coming over, this looks like the play side to me. Like we're, we're creating a wall here. We're creating these walls to kind of run it back against the grain. I don't know what this scheme here is, but 23 is here. Two has kind of overrun it again. Not that he necessarily did anything wrong, but he ends up having overrun it. Charbonnet sees that pretty much as soon as 23 gets gets loose. Charbonnet's already breaking down. Efficient steps there to, to get going the other direction. This looks like six. Kind of speeds he got, not enough. Okay, not not a total burner. I think 18 is a linebacker. Yeah, that's the middle linebacker. And is Charbonnet reading 23? Or does he just see this hole? I think he's reading this side. That's a good hard cut. What I'd like to see in the open field here, he had plenty of time. 
he had plenty of time to switch hands with the ball here, not just for ball security reasons. That would be, that's one thing. But he's been pretty good with that stiff arm, just fighting for a couple extra yards, especially in the open field. We've seen it a couple times. If he switches this ball to his right hand, he can have that left hand free to get a stiff arm on one of these guys. Instead of having to slow down, I mean, I don't know that he had to slow down, but instead of choosing to slow down at the end of this play and just kind of get ridden out of bounds, I feel like with that stiff arm available, I don't think he's going to score either way, but he could get another, another few yards out of this, be able to continue his momentum, push off downfield. Who's got the ball? All right, Charbonnet doesn't have the ball. Nice block. This is some kind of power run. Counter, maybe? That's the center and the tackle. Is this pin and pull? No, pin and pull was with the backside tackle, I believe. Yeah, pin and pulls with the backside tackle. So this isn't pin and pull. This is just, I don't know, some sort of counter look, as far as I can tell. Just keeps that wide track. All right, let's see what's going on here. Is there a cutback lane? Not yet. That could be a cutback lane, but this guy's pursuing. Seventy four doesn't really get a very good block here. Yeah, twenty one gets loose. I feel like Charbonnet had the right idea to cut this back. He just needed to do it like a step earlier because he ends up. He ends up at a spot where him and his linemen run into each other, and I don't think. I mean, obviously it's an accident, but I think if he cuts this back, he cuts back not just upfield, but it ends up being, you know, his momentum takes him and he's got to come back. And that happens when he's already beyond his offense. Like the cut doesn't happen until he's already wider than this offensive lineman. And 21 is coming off that block already. If Charbonnet's thought is he needs to press to the outside, he went too far. He could cut this back right here. And I think he he's able to see and make that, like he could have made that decision here, I think. Yeah, I, I think he could, as soon as that helmet, as soon as 21's helmet, Gets out, gets on the outside of 74. So right here, I understand him not cutting back because it looks like 21 might be cutting this off, cutting this lane off. But as soon as, I missed it again. As soon as there, he, he could cut this up right now and maybe score a touchdown. But he takes it out for a couple more steps. How, how many steps does he take after that? Boom, right there. Okay, one, two, he cuts on that third step. If he cuts that back sooner, I think he scores. Let's 
It's not a very good drop. It's hard to tell why he drops it. It doesn't, I mean, maybe he's hearing footsteps, but it doesn't look like a... It doesn't, it's not a concentration drop where he's looking up before he's secured it. He might just be hearing footsteps or something fucked up with his hand positioning, but it's hard to tell. This is, uh, this is an interesting play here. I don't understand what they're running. And this angle is almost too close. Okay, we got a backside double team with some interior linemen here. Our play side tackle is kicking out the edge. So we don't have any pullers. Other than this guy coming through on jet motion. So no pullers. We got double teams. The backside edge is not unblocked. So this, well, the backside edge might be. No, the backside edge is not unblocked. I don't know. Is this some weird? The, it's too wide of a track to be, this might be wind back. But I don't think Wineback has double teams. I don't know what this is. If anybody makes it this late in the video and happens to know, please let me know, because I don't know what this is. But he, there's nothing going on here. He has nowhere to go. By the time he's got the ball, three is already in his face. 23 gets bumped and is then unable to help. Is 57 is pulling. 57's helping. Or looks like he's blocking 99. But then he comes across. Is this some some form of trap maybe that's trap I don't know but those guys run into each other and there doesn't end up really being anywhere for Charbonnet to go there oops okay I guess that's uh, I guess that's it it's my first look at uh, Zach Charbonnet I don't really have any uh, closing statements, any encapsulating thoughts. I think he's a fairly impressive uh, open field runner. Generally, I think uh, good at the line of scrimmage. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't really want to turn this into uh, me pontificating about uh, Zach Charbonnet as a player. Um, that was me uh, watching film. Thanks for checking it out. Um, I've got some... Uh, Maybe Devon A-Chain, maybe some Jameer Gibbs next. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, thanks for checking it out. Deuces.